What I had planned to cover today, after this, this next slide I was going to do was um, attack methodology, right? So how to attack a network. What what I find a lot of students struggle with is the process of attacking machines. So what I always tell people is you get a lot of people who are really, really familiar with running InMap. They're familiar with in, uh, Metasploit, Nikto, Derby, you know, Medusa, Hydra. They know all these tools, but just because they're familiar with the tool, they really don't know how to use the tool in context, right? what's the process that you follow so that you can use these tools uh, in a hack lab environment or a CTF. So you got to have a process and a decision tree that you follow. And that was going to be the next real piece that I wanted to talk about. Right. And those steps are host discovery, service discovery, vulnerability research, and then deeper host enumeration. If that vulnerability research doesn't initially work. Right. So what I'm going to give you here is the set of syntax that I use. So then when I'm doing host discovery, right, then you see that I run this in map with this lowercase s capital P. I ping sweep. Then after that, I might do a list scan with in map. That's another DNS based scan. If I'm on a local network, I might run an ARP scan. If I'm on a local network or um, if I think I can sweep the network quickly for a particular port, I'll run uh, Propecia, and then I'll sort my scan output, uh, you know, with that cat command, I'll cat file three sort dash T and pipe all of it into uh, lab.txt, right? That way I have one file with everything sorted. Uh, I like to sweep the network for port 111 and port, 11, uh, port 445. This was actually what I really wanted to demo today because it's a nice way to sweep the network and quickly sort stuff. Okay, so the point that I was making was a lot of people, they'll go through this scan process and then when it doesn't work, they kind of don't know what to do. And that's what I was really kind of hoping I could cover today. And what I have for that is I have this advanced lab scanning document that I was going to go through. All right, so with this, what ends up happening in a lot of the networks today is students try and get in and they start doing their different scanning. They, they don't have a good methodology. I think you're going to keep seeing that I pound on methodology because it's one of those things that I think people kind of understand the big picture, but when they get in and start running into issues that affect the scans that they do, they can't figure out why their scan isn't working or they can't figure out why their exploit isn't working. So I always tell people, you know, it's a pretty simple process, but stuff can go wrong, right? Stuff can go wrong. So what are some of those things that could go wrong? So the first thing that can cause you headaches and heartaches when you're in the network is you're trying to scan stuff and there's things between you and the target that's causing you issues. So there might be routers, firewalls, intrusion prevention systems, there might be compression agents between network, there might be um, network equipment, access control lists, VLANs, network segmentation. You know, all these things can affect your ability to scan the network. You might be trying to scan the network and then uh, this network doesn't pass a particular protocol, doesn't pass traffic going to a particular port. Um, maybe because it's going from two different types of networks, topologies, uh, network architecture, you might be going from one type of uh, network through an MPLS cloud, and that might, you know, mess things up. You might have to go through a CSU, DSU, and bounce through a lease line. So all these things change change what types of traffic are allowed to traverse the network, and all these devices affect the size of the packets that you can place on the network. So because of that, you might have skewed results. You might have some scans that don't work. And one of the things that a lot of people don't understand when they're connecting to these lab networks through these VPNs, the VPN gateway itself may have security features that's blocking some of the scans that you're doing. The VPN itself, whether the VPN is set up for routing or for bridging, right, 
may forward certain types of traffic or not. The next thing is, you know, depending on where you work, where you work may have things like multiplexers, encryption devices, bandwidth limitations. Any of these types of things affect the way that you work. So what I try to tell people is, okay, let's connect to the network. And then I was going to walk you through these sets of scans that I like to do when I'm in the network, right? So I like to do... Um, I have to try and paint sweep the network. Well, my network, one of the things you're gonna find is sometimes ping sweeps work, sometimes they don't. All right, so the next option that I try to go if my ping sweep doesn't work is I'll try to go for an ARP scan. So the reason that you might do an ARP scan is because the host, if you're on the same network, the host might be running a host-based firewall. So oftentimes with a host-based firewall, you can't connect to it with your layer three, layer four traffic, but your layer two traffic with ARP will still uh, still show up because the host will still respond to ARP requests. So this can be a way that you can figure out if something is on the network, but it's got some sort of host-based filtering solution running on it. So that'll be my next thing. So I try my ping sweep because I told you that's the methodology, ping sweep then port scan. Well, then the first issue is what happens if your ping sweep doesn't work? So for me, if my ping sweep doesn't work, I try a list scan, lowercase l, excuse me, lowercase s, capital L. Next thing I do is I try an ARP scan, see if that works. Now, when it's actually time to start scanning hosts, one of the things that you'll see that I do is I actually start slowing down and start scanning specific ports. Nmap by default scans 1,000 ports. So in a lot of cases, because you've got this incremental port climb, trying to connect to so many ports in the net on the target host, uh, one of the network solutions might kill your connection or throttle back your connection. So if you're having issues scanning, scanning for a specific number of ports, I find that that's often pretty helpful. If you're in a situation where you are trying to scan hosts and you think you're dealing with intrusion prevention systems or you're dealing with some sort of active filter detection, or you're dealing with something that's causing a lot of latency in the environment. You may wanna do things like changing the MTU, maximum transmission unit. Shrinking the MTU oftentimes will help you in places that have high latency. So you can be on a network and the network is not passing all of the traffic that you want it to pass. And you might think, it's a security solution that you're dealing with. You might think, oh, I must be dealing with an IPS, and oftentimes I'll find that just changing the MTU fixes that so that my scans work. You may be doing all these scans and you may find that slowing down your scans, introducing a scan delay of like 15 seconds per port, right, that might help you out. I found that these are the types of things that help me out. And then again, you start getting into networks that have uh, a lot of uh, security products in them. Even these lab networks where they're running PFSense as the gateway for your VPN, or they're running OpenVPN like I am, uh, OpenVPN appliance, sometimes people implement, you know, untangle or some sort of you know, filtering solution. So you've got to be able to figure that stuff out and you've got to be able to, uh, you know, work your way around it.